that I worked with recently in a kindergarten setting had a family that um, had experienced trauma. So mum had, um, had, uh, had experienced mental illness um, and high anxiety levels. Um, there had been reports of some um, violence in the family, some um, domestic violence and also drug abuse and the behaviours that the child exhibited as a result of mum's, I guess, anxiety there and her personality that changed each, each day was, um, was quite extreme and very difficult for us to work with. Um, this child was a very aggressive child at times but also at other times a very loving and caring child towards towards um, his mother in particular um, and that was a really you know, difficult um, relationship for us to establish. He, he had that relationship with his mum and with his dad when, when he dropped off um, but really wasn't allowing anyone else to establish that relationship, peers or, or staff, um, for some time with him. Um, yeah, so his behaviours were quite um, escalated quite quickly and for no particular reason, but also um, were quite aggressive towards other children, towards staff, um, also self-harming towards him, himself, um, so biting him, himself um, as, a, as a form of, well, I don't, yeah, as a form of release of, of the tension that he felt inside. Um, he often would um, react to the way mum was or what had happened in the family home prior to attending kindergarten so therefore yeah, that, that sort of flowed on and um, yeah it was really um, you know really different every day or different you know when you, you sort of thought you, you worked, it out, worked it out a little bit it would change some, yeah, and it depended I guess on how the family situation was and what was happening at home prior to yeah, arrival at kinder. So um, for us to try and develop that safe secure environment was very very difficult because we felt um, once we, we were making some, some headway into you know, establishing his likes, his dislikes, what um, made him comfortable that would change or it would be different on any given day. Um, we established, you know, we were always very clear with routines and very, um, very consistent. That was really important. Um, but yeah, I, I did find some of those strategies did, like that would work with other children didn't particularly work with him. Um, you would think that you were consistent every day, but some days he would like rules one way, another, another day he would like them different ways. Um, I felt that he really liked to have control of the situation, um, be it with a child, with an adult, with his mum, with his dad. He needed to have some sort of control. It's either that fight or flight type response to things or to a situation. Um, so some days he would come to kinder, he would want, he would tell his mum, I want to go to kinder. So she would bring him um, and often, like I said, it, the lead up to that would be really quite a stressful time um, from what mum would explain what happened in the house. So it was, yeah, it was quite bedlimish, I think, before they got to, in the car or got in, however the transport was to get to kinder. And then when he got there, he would say he didn't want to be at kinder. But then mum would say, let's go home, and he wouldn't want to do that. So, um, and then mum's responses to him would, would be really um, escalate quite quickly, where she would be angry with him, and then the next minute she would be cuddling and crying with him, and it was quite, um, you know, no, no consistent response with him. And then that then obviously translated to his behaviour, um, and but wanted to have situate, uh, wanted to have control, but also established really quickly um, what really made um, an emotional impact on an adult, um, and would would use that to. Yeah, to try and control or guide the situation. Yeah, which was really quite a um, an interesting behaviour to establish at such a young age. Um, for example, he would. Uh, mum was an avid gardener, really loved gardening, and one day he was really cross with mum. So he would go out and, and wreck all, you know, pull all the plants out of our garden. And we sort of translated that into a response to, well, I'm angry with mum, and I know this will hurt my mum's feelings. And we established over over time. Time, a long time, um, a routines. So we felt that when he came to kinder, he needed to be really quite settled, didn't like other attention. So he, we, we established with mum to come a little bit later, at different time, a different, you know, a bit later than the other children. So it wasn't like the, the focus on him in any way. Um, he always seemed quite hungry, so we would have um, a morning tea ready for him, some biscuits and, and, and that sort of thing, that he was able to sit down and eat as much as he liked. Um, and then we also worked a lot with the other children in um, helping to guide his behaviour and to role model 
is uh, appropriate behaviour for him and we would really reinforce that. Um, it felt like that as an adult if we tried to, to um, role model or to guide, it felt like he yeah, would, would almost put up brick walls but it was okay with children that he established relationships with but like I said it was over time. It felt like you know you would have that really nice interaction, he would give you some eye contact, he would actually verbally you know have an interaction with you and then you would think yep we're on our way here and then the next time it would, you know because we only saw him twice a week on a maybe a I think it was a Tuesday Friday and by the time Friday came around it was yeah the whole it changed again and Mm, just that inconsistency I think at home and perhaps what he'd had all his life and then that translated into his behaviours and um, it was, yeah, I, I believe it was really a control. He needed, there was, he felt like his life was out of control at times and he needed to have control of something. It was a difficult group to work with so that certainly, the, the group of children certainly didn't um, assist I guess in, um, in bringing those, those positive behaviours out in him. Um, he did have to, at times, you know, fight for his space or fight for his, his area. And given that there was a limited amount of staff in the room, um, yeah, it was sometimes really difficult for him to, to, you know, control what he needed to control to feel like he was safe and secure. The children bought their own lunch and it was, yeah, he would just have his lunch or go and grab his lunch whenever he felt like it. Like it was no, there was no routine in when to eat or when, where to eat um, or how to eat in particular. And we would always try and create situations where it was a win-win situation for him. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And that was probably one of the most frustrating or difficult things that sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. What worked one day wouldn't work the next. We found that um, he established um, relationships with a couple of the other peers, other children at, at Kinder, which was, you know, just to have that relationship with anybody. Like initially it was, it, it was very much that fight or flight, like he more or less felt like he had to, you know, fight for everything. Gone. But yeah, it was trying to establish that consistency for him that this is a safe, um, nurturing place, a learning place. You know, you can, it's give and take. Um, it's not just, you know, you didn't have to just hold everything, all your cards close to your heart. That, you know, you could trust the other children at Kinder for, um, you know, to engage in socially, to play with, to, to share things with you. You could trust us as staff, as adults, to be consistent with you, to do the same, you know, to expect the same things of you every time, to follow through with the same things every time. And that was really important. We, we as difficult as it was sometimes, um, you know, like my co-worker and I used to say, sometimes you just, you feel like you give, give, give and you just get you know, slapped back in the face sometimes, but you couldn't change, you had to keep giving and you had to keep being, but, but at the same time you had to be firm around the behaviours that were expected of him. Um, we, we, we didn't change them, um, to change the rules for him. Um, we, you know, we adapted them to, to suit his needs and the situation at times, but we didn't change, we didn't have different expectations on him than what we would have of the other children. But, um, after a while we realised he was establishing a relationship with another child in particular and yeah so we sort of we used that child as a positive role model for him um, which was it was, it was a really nice relationship. That child took a little while to develop some maturity throughout the year and once he did um, yeah this, this little chap looked up to him and I remember one incident one day where they were sitting playing just beautifully at the Play-Doh table which was you know it was really nice and they um, they he then started to you know break pieces of Play-Doh off and throw them around the room which you know created a bit of an unsafe situation for other children and so you know we discussed about you know tidying it up and the reasons why you know that it was unsafe because things like this had happened at home where they would Apparently the children would just throw the toys all over the place or the breakfast cereal all over the floor. and So, you know, trying to create the why we need to pick the Play-Doh up and about other people's, uh, other children's feelings and safety. And, um, and initially he didn't want anything to do with helping to pick up and it was kind of, yeah, it was sort of, you know, well, you do it, you, you, you go and do that. I'm like, well, anyway, we, we used the other child in the situation and he came and helped pick up the, the Play-Doh and we sort of tried to make it a bit of fun and a bit of you know really positive well done that's great you know it's so much safer and so much more fun when we're safe and da, da, da. 
And in the end, he came along, but he did then take control of that situation. So he then ended up, well, you know, telling this other boy what he needed to do. Like, you know, well, I'm gonna hold the broom and you sweep it up and you do this, which was okay because he was having that feeling of, well, I'm actually being involved, I'm working with another child, I'm having you know, a, a nice positive interaction and we're both getting something out of this and, and we're actually looking after, you know, after other people. So, you know, whilst he then needed to, he still needed to control that situation, which was fine, you know, that was okay. So as an adult, we sort of removed ourselves. We actually went and got the camera and <laughs> took a photo of it because it was so beautiful. But, you know, we removed ourselves from that situation because we didn't need to be there. And he, he you know, as a child, he didn't need to have adults telling him what they needed him to do all the time. He really was, you know, um, I, I don't know whether in his life he didn't have adults to rely on, so he just relied on himself to, to get through. I just, I think it's really important that educators um, can seize the opportunities when parents or families come to them um, because yeah, sometimes you, you can give them advice and give them ideas but it's not until they really want to take up the opportunity um, and sometimes it's you know time and time again you, you might link them into services and then they fall out but you, I think you just got to keep keep trying and to access as many services and to know as much information as you can. Um, I found like early early days I didn't know what services were out there and I didn't know who to ring and you know you missed opportunities because you say oh look I'll get back to you tomorrow on that but tomorrow is too late for some some or for a lot of the families you know when they're there talking to you and saying that they need help that's when you need to go yep no worries I know someone who can help you and you know and make that phone call there and then with them. I think it's really like, yeah, that window of opportunity sometimes I felt was really quite quite um, limited and I really think you had to, and then you had to follow through and you had to, you know, do what you say you were gonna do, like, and be consistent every time. And, and yeah, I, and I think just knowledge of your local area and your local people is really important to, like I said, to link them into services and not just do it once, you have gotta do it every time that they ask for that help, keep going back to it. It is a holistic thing. It's not just about the child. It's not just about the mum, and the dad. It's the it's the big picture stuff. Yeah. But and the other thing I think is, as carers, as, as educators, we need to be kind to ourselves and not feel like we have to solve every problem for every child. Um, some children we work better with, and families like you know in any situation, and we have to acknowledge that, and we have to um, you know uh, I guess use all, all the people that we know and um, gain information from different people and different resources and, and access different um, different places that, you know, services or, and, and sometimes some people just click better with some children than others and, and that's okay, you know, using their skills and using the, the ways they work with children to then, um, you know, guide your, your working with children as well.